Good morning, it's about 8 o'clock on Saturday the 25th of July 2020 and I'm going to ask Jo to spin the random comment selector and try to pick as a winner for the Chef AJ book. Okay. Uh, winner, B E E B. Hi Jane and Joe, glad you were in good spirits. If you're comfortable in your own skin, that's a good way to be. I'm 90% there, depending on the day. Health is your wealth. Look after yourselves. B. X. P. S. I've watched Chef AJ on YouTube before. I would be interested in checking out her book. There you go, B. It's going to be on its way to you when you've sent me an email to janiac7 at googlemail.com with an address to send it to. As I always say, it doesn't have to be your home address we can send it anywhere straight from Amazon. So congratulations and well done. A um, couple of bits of housekeeping. If I was speaking to a live audience now, I would say I need to start this meeting with a couple of bits of housekeeping. I'll tell you where the toilets are, where the emergency exits are, what time the coffee breaks and the lunch breaks are. Well, we're not gonna do any of that because we're not around long enough. But what I want to just point out a couple of things. Firstly, I want to show you this T-shirt non-scale victory. Well, no, not a non-scale victory, I don't suppose, because it involves the scales, but my friend has a 13-year-old daughter, and her daughter bought me this t-shirt for Christmas. She had it made at Primark in Birmingham, and it's one of the Disney range that you can add something to. So it says, live, love, laugh, but then across here, it says Sparkle. Sparkle is my nickname amongst my close friends. So I thought it was really sweet of her to put that on. But when I got it at Christmas, I could not wear it. I, I pulled, pulled it on like you do a t-shirt. My boobs were flattened and my belly was, ugh. I couldn't get in it. it, it would, I mean, it's a size medium um, in this range and it would have been obscene to go out in it. You could see my belly button, it was that tight. But what I thought this morning when I was getting dressed was, hey, I wonder how that t-shirt fits now. And I got it out and I put it on and it fits perfectly and it's even nice and spacious. So if you've got a piece of clothing that you've had a while that you like and you want to wear it, after you've lost a few pounds, keep trying it on. I mean, tomorrow's the day when I'm going to try my ankle grazer jeans on again because it'll be a month since I tried them. When I first tried them, couldn't get them up my legs. After a month, I could get them on and I could fasten them, but they were tight. So tomorrow is a month down the road and I'm going to try them again. It's no good doing it every couple of days, is it? But when you've lost a sizable amount of weight, it might work. The other bit of housekeeping is, um, last week I mentioned in my video that I was hoping to give away a copy of the Jenny Murray book, Fat Cow, Fat Chance. Now I've read the book. I'm not going to give you my copy. I'm going to send you a brand new copy. I've read the book. I've got mixed feelings about it and I want to read it again before I talk about it. And I'm not going to talk about it and give away spoilers, so if you win the book, it'll be a fresh book to you. I just want to share my opinion on a few things that she says. So um, I haven't really got time to do that today, so I'm going to do it on Wednesday. In my video on Wednesday, I'll show you the book, because I've actually got a copy now to show you. And I'll talk about it a wee bit, and then we'll offer it as a giveaway. Okay. Right, let's get into today's video and the purpose of being here. This is a weigh-in video. That's what my Saturday videos are. I might pop up on a Wednesday and talk about something that's relevant to me or something that I'm working through. But on a Saturday, it's always going to be a weigh-in video. So my weigh-in results today are the bag's present and it's got something in it. And I'm pleased to say what it has in it is a mango. which is quite cold, and another mango. These three pieces of fruit total two pounds, and that's what I've lost this week, a further two pounds. So, in the nine weeks since I got myself kicking and screaming back on track, I have lost one and a half, three and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two, two, one, half two that totals 17 and a half pounds in nine weeks which is roughly two pounds a week and i'm back now i'm not a target because i haven't got a target i don't want a target 
I'm back at what I call a healthy weight. My BMI is 23.45, somewhere around there. My weight is 127 pounds or nine stone, one pounds to people who do stones and pounds. And I feel good. And this week's been another week of eating for pleasure because I'm eating the food that fills me up, that doesn't leave me craving. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful for what I'm actually learning about how to eat to overcome addictions to food, to overcome compulsive eating, to overcome emotional eating, which I think is possibly one of the harder things to do, and to overcome cravings. And that's my responsibility to keep myself doing that. The only person I need to focus on with any of that is myself. Something I've been doing this week, um, well, this kicked off a couple of weeks ago when Joe and I used the Headspace app. Andy Puddykin, is it? I can never remember his surname. Lovely guy, used to be a monk. And you can get this Headspace app on your phone or on your iPad or your laptop or whatever device you use. And uh, we started using it a few weeks ago. And I must say, it's brilliant. It's meditation, but it's also about mindfulness. So many times I hear people say, you must be mindful, you must be mindful. And then they go on to talk about something. And I'm not criticising any one particular person, but I sit there thinking, love, you haven't got a clue what mindful means. I don't have that much of a clue, and I've been looking into it for about a year. Being mindful is not willpower. Being mindful is not self-control. Being mindful is learning how to train your mind to do something different. So that when your mind is, this is my understanding, when your mind is challenged in that queue at Asda or Sainsbury's or somewhere and there's a rack of chocolates at the side of you, you don't have to stand there gripping onto the till going, oh, I can't have a bar of chocolate, I can't have a bar of chocolate, I'm on diet. What you have to do is move your mind to something else. So being mindful, I don't think, is spending 20 minutes every time that happens feeling resentful, feeling angry and trying to stop yourself picking up that bar of chocolate. Being mindful is learning a practice that literally carries you away from that and takes you somewhere else. I mean, lots of people can explain it better than me. I'm not the best at explaining things. But just quoting that, I need to be more mindful, I need to be more mindful, sounds to me like people are th thinking, I've got to control my mind, I've got to control my mind. And I think sometimes being mindful is actually letting go of your mind and letting your spirit do something for you. Anyway, you might agree with me, you might disagree with me, but I'd love to know what people understand by mindful. I'm not saying my version is right and yours is wrong. I'd love to know how being mindful works for you. Or if you've ever done any mindful course, mindfulness courses, there are brilliant courses out there. There are books, there's all sorts of stuff on YouTube, there's loads of stuff, but it is not about just saying, I ought to be more mindful, I need to be more mindful. Because talking about it, don't do it. Like talking about losing weight, don't make you any thinner. Actually taking action is what makes you thinner. Or fatter, because you can take the wrong action. Anyway, so we're listening to uh, the Headspace app. And at the end of the meditation we did, Andy gave a little reading about the process of things. It's not always looking at the end results, it's about getting to enjoy the process because it's the process that matters. And, and I can't quote you his reading, but that, that was in a nutshell, it's about enjoying the process. Because if you think about it, if you're on a weight loss journey, the process is today, tomorrow, the next day, the next day, that's all part of the process. Because you're not going to have an on-scale victory every day. You're not going to get to target every day. But you've got to learn to enjoy the process. So during the week, I made a note on my mobile of, I think, five points that actually spoke to me on that day. This, some of these, they didn't all happen at once, they happened on different days. But that spoke to me about my journey, my process, my end game, right? So I'm going to ask Jo to read the first of those points and then just briefly touch on how it speaks to me. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, the process is the goal which will get you to target. Yeah. So if you view the process, what you eat each day, having a rock-solid plan that you believe in as your process, 
So the process of washing a load of washing is you put the dirty washing in, you put the soap powder in, you put the fabric conditioner, conditioner in, you press the button, what comes out at the end? Clean washing. If you put the washing in, you didn't put any soap powder in, you didn't put any fabric conditioner in and you press the button, what's likely to come out at the end is not clean washing. Or if you put the washing in but you didn't put the soap powder and the conditioner in and you didn't press the button, nothing's going to come out at the end because that's the process of getting clean washing. And every task that we undertake has a process, whether it's like us now that we eat a lot more vegetables and things, preparation is our process, which leads to us then cooking the food and then bloody well enjoying it. You've got to have a process. So can you just read me that quickly again, Joe, that one? The process is the goal which will get you to target. Yeah. So repeating, wash, rinse, repeat, whatever, every day, every day, every day, chipping away, chipping away, gets you to the weight you want to be. If you don't have a process, if you just ad hoc, oh, today I'm going to do this, tomorrow I'm going to eat that, the next day, well, it's Monday, I hate Mondays, I'm going to have the day off, and the next day I get up and I think, oh, I had a day off, I can't get back on plan. You've messed, I know they said the F word, <laughs> you've messed up your process. You're making it hard for yourself. When I keep saying you, please believe me, I mean me. I've messed up my process. I'd be making it harder for myself because I am just as vulnerable as anybody else to food. So, second point, Joe. Learn to enjoy how and remember why because you will still be there. You will still be you when your weight is at target on those scales. If you don't enjoy and appreciate what you are eating now, you won't stick with it when you are slim. Maintaining is just more of the same. So, the how and the why. Well, once you've got a plan you believe in and you're actually taking that as your process, all you need to do is keep repeating, keep repeating and focus on the why. And the why for me is to be a healthy weight. So I want to be bang in the middle of, of the healthy weight bracket with a BMI of 22.5. So that's my why. My how is to keep repeating the process. And if I don't keep doing that, I'm never going to get to the why I'm doing it. The thing is, along the way, we can get blasé, shall we say. But I think it's important to remember that you've got to keep doing it. You want to get to target. You do want, you know, don't let those crazy thoughts in your head rule you because we're all in the same boat. It's difficult for everybody. Nobody loses weight easily. Most of us put it on easily, but we didn't get to where we are without some effort of eating. Now, when we get to Target, we are still that same person. I have yet to meet anybody in my 40, well, 50 years of dieting who says, do you know what? I don't want to overeat anymore. I don't want to compulsively overeat anymore. I, I don't have any addiction to sugar, chocolate, cake, biscuits, whatever. I never even eat for emotional reasons. I am born again. No, I've never met anybody in that position. For the rest of our lives, I believe we will fight those demons. And when we get to target and we step on those scales and it gives us the magic number that we want to be, we are still the same people. And if we don't keep doing what we've done to get there, we won't stay there. Because there is nowhere in this world that suddenly says, scientifically, you can up your calories by 100 a day, 200 a day, and you'll stay that weight. You up your calories, you start going up. I was listening to a book yesterday. No, it wasn't. It was a video I was watching by Dr. Doug Lyle. And he was saying, if you take a woman, age 40, and you overfed her 10 calories a day, which, that's nothing, is it? We mostly do that. But if we're consistently for 20 years, at the end of that 20 years, she could be 20 pounds heavier. Because if you're consistently overeating, eventually it adds up. So for people like us, or some of us who've had big weight problems, to actually drop to eating so much less and then suddenly think, well, actually, I could start having so-and-so like I used to. I could go back to having my old breakfast of four, four slices of buttered toast. I'm thin now. My body will just burn it off. I'll run around the block. The thing about running around the block when you're thin is you burn a hell of a lot less calories than you do running around the block when you're fat. It's incredible the difference it makes. I can do a walk now for an hour and a quarter 
and I'm probably burning half the calories I would have been burning when I did that walk two years ago, two stone heavier. It, it's science, because I'm not shifting so much weight, I'm not burning so many calories, and yet I can walk faster now. But you wear a heart rate monitor and you check that for yourself, it's science. So when you get to target, you are still going to be the same person. But by then, because you've got a lot of process behind you, you should feel differently about how you eat and what you eat. Mum, sorry to say, but you've travelled so much from the middle, you're nearly off the screen. Which way do I need to uh, go? To your right. That way? Yeah. That oh, was me running no, down the No, a bit more. I'm still a bit more, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Right, next one, Jen. Create momentum for yourself and you will become a moving object that is difficult to stop. Yeah, now this speaks to me because as I've just shared with you, the amount of weight I've lost in nine weeks, nine consecutive losses, I've created some momentum, I'm trying to stay in the same place, I've created some momentum. So I've got nine losses in a row, totaling 17 and a half pounds. Do I want another loss next week? Yeah, you bet I do. Because I want to keep the momentum going. It doesn't mean I'm going to starve myself to get it. It means I'm going to continue eating my plan, the process that's got me 17 and a half pounds down in nine weeks. And if you create that momentum, and this is something that came from Rich Roll. He was talking about overcoming alcoholism. But if you create that momentum, there becomes an energy within yourself. Can you relate to that, Joe, when I'm saying it? Yeah. It becomes an energy within yourself that just wants you to keep going forward so that when you go to bed at night, you put your head on the pillow and you think, do you know what? That was a bloody good day and I didn't overeat. I didn't compulsively eat. I didn't emotionally eat, but I'm satisfied. I was satiated at every meal. It's hard to get the ball rolling, but once it's going, you don't want to break the streak. Well, you used to say it was like a snowball. Yeah, it's like a snowball. You yeah. start a snowball at the top of the hill and you get it rolling down that hill. By the time it gets to the bottom, it's massive. Just because you kept it moving. So I think it's important because if I go to bed at night, put my head on the pillow and I think, do you know what? That was a good day. I get up the following morning and I feel positive. If I go to bed at night and I think, you blew it, you stupid woman. I get up the next morning and before I've even put my first foot on the floor, I feel shit about myself. And I'm battling with not doing it again, not overeating again, not eating badly again. But if you can keep that momentum going, it builds a positivity and a belief in yourself. And that's really helped me this week, which we're all saying that. I've, I, and I thought, when he said it, I thought, I'm at that point 61 days in. You know, that's momentum. That's my snowball rolling down that hill. Next one, Joe. Uh, if you are planning days off, how invested are you in how you eat? Plan a takeaway once a month and watch yourself become disillusioned in how you eat every other day. Right, so we've got 31 days this month. And I'm planning, say I was planning a takeaway take next Friday, is it the last day? The whole of my mind would be absorbed with, when, when I can have that takeaway? What can I add to that takeaway? Oh, I'll add this and this and this. And, oh, I could add that. And what well, am I just going to have for? If it's the last time. If it's the last time, am I just, oh, truly blind. The last time it's like I'm Jesus and the last takeaway. supper. <laughs> I don't think Jesus over at the last supper, even though he knew he was going to die, you know? But how many times have we said that? If this is the last time, I won't do it again. But if I said to myself, right, Jane, you can have a takeaway. Takeaways are not my thing. It would be a binge for me. You can have a takeaway on the last day of the month. You've just got to get to the 31st and you're on the 25th now. My whole head would have been totally taken up for the whole month with when I get to that takeaway. So that takeaway might have started off as fish and chips. Then it might have evolved into a Chinese. Then I might have thought, oh, hang on a minute. If I went Indian, I could have more. And then it might be, well, I'll add... Pashwari naan and oof, and I'll add and I'll add and before you know it I'm ordering a takeaway for me that would feed four people because that's how greedy I am but if my mind is totally focused on that for 30 days to get me to the 31st I'm not going to make it I couldn't make it three days let alone 30 now in this household we eat pretty much the same way every day we don't bring food into the house that we shouldn't be eating because Chef AJ says if it's in your house, it could be in your mouth. And you know what? I have proved that a zillion times because I've done that so many times. If it's in the house, it'll be in my mouth. Even though I don't want it to be, my brain goes, eat it, and then it's gone and it can't shout it from the cupboard. And I think most people could relate to that. 
Now, so, for the whole of July, we've had nothing major. We've had no birthdays. We've had, you know, we're just going through life with the same ups and downs with the COVID thing as everybody else and the same disappointments and difficulties as everybody else. But a week today is my husband's birthday. So are we planning a takeaway? Will we buy him a birthday cake? Will we spoil him? And no, we've got him two really nice birthday presents. We'll get him a really nice card. We'll invite him for lunch on the Sunday. We'll show him how much we appreciate him by cooking him a good meal. But I am not going out and buying a cake that's this big, like I've done before, that's supposed to cut into 30 or 40 pieces and cutting great noggins out of it. And by the end of the day after his birthday, I've eaten seven eighths of that cake because nobody else in my house really likes cake that much. Richard would have one piece. Joe would probably not because he's not a cake eater and he's gluten free anyway. And I'm not buying a gluten free cake because they're crap. And I would have eaten seven eighths of that cake because it was Richard's birthday. Can you imagine what I'd do if it was my birthday? That's one of the things I've got to learn not to do. So focusing on saying to yourself as a treat, as a reward, why would you treat, this is me being deadly serious because this is where I've come to from where the, the hell I used to live in. Why would you treat yourself and call it a treat when it's the food that made you fat in the first place? Now talking to myself here, I didn't get 22 stone eating rye eaters. I got 22 stone eating absolute rubbish. So why would I go out there today, buy myself some more absolute rubbish and call it a treat? Excuse me. Because I'm lying to myself. Why would I get to the stage where I'm back down at nine stone one and say to myself, you're a weight loss champion, you've done so well, I'm really proud of you. Let me reward you. Okay, if you want to reward me, I'll have an Italian designer handbag. I could do with a nice new pair of walking shoes. Oh no, 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 no. I mean, reward you with something nice to eat. Because that's what, you, you know, this is my inner child. That's what you used to like. A big bag full of food. It's a reward. No, it's not. Today, it's a bloody punishment. So, yeah, I feel so strongly about the, the use of these words, treat yourself, treat yourself. Why don't we learn to treat ourselves with something that's not gonna make us feel guilty when we stand at the scales next week and have us going, oh God, I've had to work hard all week to try and pull it back. And I've got away with, I've only gained a pound and a half. You haven't got away with anything. That pound and a half might take you four weeks to lose. That's not, bit, that's not loving yourself. That's loving food more than you love yourself. And I know that for a fact because I've been there a zillion times. And by the grace of God and abstinence, I'm not there today. And that's the only thing I can say, I'm not there today. Because today's all I've done. What's the one more, Joe? Yeah, make yourself accountable but don't seek approval. This is a really, I think this is a really powerful thing, especially for people who vlog their weight loss journey. And I've heard... Lately, and I've watched one or two, there are some brilliant Slimming World vloggers out there, up and coming, new people who've got some great ideas and skills. And, you know, I think if you're going to watch Slimming World on YouTube, there's never been a better time. Invest some of your energy and time into watching people that are losing weight, that are encouraging you. But make yourself accountable. Make yourself accountable to yourself if you're doing this on your own. Make yourself accountable to, like in my case, my son, we live together. We don't eat the same meals, but we eat the same style of food. We both eat whole food plant-based. But I do it within the boundaries of Slimming World. Joe just eats as much of it as he wants to because that's what he can do. So I'm accountable to Joe. So he makes sure that I eat. Because I could just say, oh, I'm not hungry this morning, I won't have breakfast. Bullshit. I don't know what hungry is after all these years of being an absolute glutton or fat cow as it says on Jenny. That's me I'm calling that. I don't know what hungry feels like. I still don't really know what hungry feels like after four and a half years around Target. Because my emotional needs are still greater than my physical needs. <clears throat> so I get up in the morning and we go walking before breakfast every morning because we believe in exercising on an empty stomach. 
We also believe that when we get back, we've got the time to cook a breakfast, sit down and appreciate it, and then move on with our day. So I'm accountable to Jo. You might live with another person, you might flat share, you might have a, a friend you do Slimming World with. There's always somebody. And if there isn't, make yourself accountable to yourself. Or if you regularly comment in the comment channel and you see somebody else who regularly comments, comment to them and say, how would you feel about, like, we kind of get to know each other a bit because I love what you put in the comments. I relate to what you write every week. And I think that if I, not going to burden you with being accountable for me, but I think if I had odd text conversations or email conversations with you, you might help me to stay motivated. And the, the worst they can say is no, but they might actually be flattered for being asked. So they're not going to be your saviour. They're not going to be your Slimming World police, but they will understand where you're coming from and you will understand where they're coming from. That's making yourself accountable, seeking support, right? But, but don't seek approval. Why do I say that? Again, I say it from years of experience because every time I've lost weight, even if I only got down to 17 stone, I had at least two people who would say to me, you're too thin. Girl, too thin at 17 stone, get you. Get, you better go spec savers. I had people when I got down to 10 stones, four ones. It's, we went to a funeral and um, people were coming up to me saying, oh, you've not got far to go now. You, you're doing really well. Not got far to go now. I thought I'd made it. And, and I would have still been in the overweight category on the, on the uh, BMI thing, but I was 10 stone four and I'd come down from like 19 and a half stone at that point. If I could count up every stone I've lost and regained, God, I'd have enough bricks to build an estate. But people will always have an opinion. So for people who vlog, we'll put ourselves out here, there'll be people watching me today who go, Jane, you're thin enough. Jane, you're too thin. Jane, you looked a bit better with more weight on your face because of your age. Jane, you ought to stop. Jane, keep going because if you got down to eight stone, you might look incredible and you might be a size, I don't know, six. Not with these boobs. There's always going to be somebody who's got an opinion and if you're not thick-skinned enough to listen to those opinions and let them go, it's going to destroy you. I think people comment out of kindness. So most people would say, you look amazing, you look brilliant, you look slim. But I had people who said that to me in my comments when I was 11 stone 11. And they were really being kind and genuine. I had people say things like that to me in my comments when I was 10 stone 10, 9 stone 9. But what matters, the only approval that I need is mine. Because if I don't feel 100% in the right place, I'm never going to eat to stay here. I'm always going to be dieting to lose a bit more because I'm disgruntled with myself. Or I'm going to be disappointed in myself, which leads me to eat. And before I know it, I'm up a stone like I was. You don't need anybody's approval. If you were in front of a live audience now, you could have this side of the audience shouting, you look great, you are slim. And you could have this side of the audience chanting, you're still fat, you lose more. Who would you listen to? Or do you just go up the aisle in the middle of the building and say, thank you kindly for your opinion. Thank you kindly for your opinion. But you know what? I'm going to do me. And that's all you can do. And if you're happy at With 29 minutes. If you're happy at 12, 13, 14 stone, that's your business. And if you want to be eight stone, crack on, because you can do it. But don't ever let anybody derail you because of their opinions. Because they'll say that to your face, behind your back, they're probably saying to their mates, well, I was trying to encourage her by saying she looked great, but actually you can see she's gained a stone. Because we're fickle, we're human. And that's the kind of thing we do. So be real and just care about yourself and your journey. Right, we'll be back on Wednesday with the Jenny Murray giveaway. Thank you for listening to my waffles, but honest to God, I feel so passionate about weight, especially in the state of this country at the moment. Right, been there, don't want to go there again. See you Wednesday, bye.